Hi students, this is Alex here. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to solve higher order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. Let's write the general form of nth order differential equation. Since it is nth order, the first term will be d power n y by d x power n. Then the second term having coefficient k1 and it is 1 power less than the previous. So d power n minus 1 y by d x power n minus 1. Then further k2 is the next coefficient and the term is d power n minus 2 y by d x power n minus 2 dot 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 till the constant term and into y which is equal to some function in terms of x. As the title states higher order so we have power n power n minus 1 n minus 2 so these are all the higher derivatives and this differential equation has constant coefficients so these are the constant coefficients k1 k2 k3 dot 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 till km we can also write capital d as d by dx so when it is dy it is nothing but dy by dx in the same way when it is d square y it is nothing but d square y by d x square suppose if it is d power n y it is nothing but d power n y by d x power n so the entire equation can also be written as d power n y plus k1 d power n minus 1 y plus k2 d power n minus 2 y plus dot 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 till km into y equal to x. Here we can take y common so d power n plus k1 d power n minus 1 plus k2 d power n minus 2 plus dot 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 till kn whole bracket into y equal to some function in terms of x. So we discussed about how the general form of a differential equation of nth order will be. Now coming to the solution of this equation, it has two part y equal to complementary function plus particular integral. The first part of the solution is complementary function and the second part of the solution is particular integral. There may be more than one particular integral depends upon the equation. So we understood the solution is in the form of y is equal to cf plus pi. Now let's discuss about the procedure to find the complementary function. We have to write an auxiliary equation. Writing auxiliary equation is nothing but take the general equation wherever capital D is there, replace it with m. So substitute D as m. So we get the auxiliary equation. For this nth order, let's write the auxiliary equation. So we get m power n plus k1 m power n minus 1 plus k2 m power n minus 2 plus dot 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 till kn into y and other side of the differential equation we have some function but equate to 0 here. So this is how we complete the auxiliary equation. Then we have to solve this equation to find the value of m. So after solving 
we get the solution as m1 m2 m3 till m n because it is the nth order if it is a quadratic we get 2 m values if it is cubic we get 3 m values since it is nth order we get n values for m now based on the values we get we have a procedure to write the complementary function let's discuss different possible cases let's see case 1 where all m values are different it means m1 not equal to m2 because they are different again not equal to m3 In the same way all the values are not equal all are different in this case the complementary function will be c1 e power m1 x in the same way we have to write for all the n values we have to take another constant c2 e power m2 x then c3 e power m3 x plus dot 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 till the last value of m so c n e power m n into x so when all m values are different this is the complementary function let's see the another case where two values of m are equal and remaining values are different like m1 is equal to m2 and apart from that m3 is not equal to m4 not equal to m5 till not equal to m n all the other values are different and these two are equal value since these two are equal we will name together as m because m1 and m2 are equal so both we will take it as m in this case our complementary function is going to be first we will complete the equal values so it is a constant c1 plus c2 x whole thing into e power m x and for the rest of the values it will be similar to the previous case plus c3 e power m3 x plus c4 e power m4 x dot 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 till the last value here what we have to notice is when two values are equal we write a linear function instead of constant here all single value m3 m4 so we write only constant c3 constant c4 even here m1 so it is a constant c1 constant c2 but in this case since these two values are equal we write a linear function c1 plus c2 x so in this case two values are equal we took m1 equal to m2 and other values are different in the same way we can also have m1 equal to m2 and m3 equal to m4 and the rest of the values m5 is not equal to m6 not equal to till the last value mn all these are different but we have two two values are equal in this case once again we write complementary function for these two equal values we have to write a linear function c1 plus c2 x into e power m1 m2 so i will write m1 x because both are same i can name it as any one then these two are also once again equal so similar to this another linear function c3 plus c4 x into e power i can use m3 x then after that the rest of the things like c5 e power m5 x 
and c6 e power m6 x plus dot 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 till the last value. So this is a, another case where two values are equal but more than two values are equal but we follow the procedure. When two equal values are there we use a linear function like how we used in the previous case but here we are using twice. Let's see another case where three values are equal. So in this case, I am going to write the complementary function directly. Like when three values are equal, we have to write a quadratic. C1 plus C2x plus C3x square into e power. Let's take m1 equal to m2 equal to m3 and totally we will name it as m so here e power mx then apart from this all the other values are not equal so c4 e power m4x plus c5 e power m5x plus dot 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 so just have a comparison with the previous case when two values are equal we write linear function when three values are equal we write a quadratic function and the rest of the different values it is similar to the first case where all the values are different we write constant into e power m1x plus another constant into e power m2x in the same way all the different values are written separately suppose in this case three values are equal let's take another case where m1 equal to m2 equal to m3 so three values are equal and also m4 equal to m5 equal to m6 then rest of the values are different in this case complementary function is going to be c1 plus c2x plus c3 x square into e power m1 x which we have written as usual plus once again we have three values are another three values are equal so this will be c4 plus c5 x plus c6 x square into e power I will take it as m4x because all the three are equal. Then apart from this, we have c7 e power m7x plus dot dot dot. All the different values will have a separate term like this. So here we notice when three values are equal, we are writing a quadratic. But here we are writing it twice because there are two set of three values are equal. We will take one more case under this where three values are equal so m1 equal to m2 equal to m3 and there are another two values are equal m4 equal to m5 then rest of the values are different like this so we have to combine the previous cases where the complementary function is going to be first three values are equal so we have to write a quadratic c1 plus c2x plus c3x square into e power m1x then here two values are equal so we have to write a linear function so c4 plus c5x into e power m4x apart from this all the remaining values we have to write separately c6 e power m6x c7 e power m7x plus dot 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 till the last value so here we notice that when three values are equal we use a quadratic and two values are equal we use linear which we already discussed in the previous cases next case where the values of m are imaginary for example if there is a value alpha plus or minus i 
beta that is m1 and m2 are complex roots so one is alpha plus i beta another is alpha minus i beta but always that occur in a conjugate pair so together we write it as alpha plus or minus i beta and apart from that the other values are m3 which is not equal to m4 all are different values till the last value here the procedure to write the complementary function is first we have to take the complex root we write e power alpha x into constant c1 cos beta x plus another constant sin beta x then apart from that the remaining different values will have the complementary function similar to the first case we take another constant c3 e power m3 x plus c4 e power m4 x plus dot 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 till the last value so here we notice that whenever the roots are imaginary or a complex value for m we use this form suppose in this case itself we have another m1 and m2 is alpha plus or minus i beta and m3 and m4 is also once again alpha plus or minus i beta this indicates that two complex roots or two complex m values are equal and apart from that the rest of the values m5 not equal to m6 not equal to dot 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 till the last value all are different since the complex roots or complex values here equal the procedure to write the complementary function is e power alpha x bracket open instead of this constant we have to write a linear term that is c1 plus c2 x then we have cos beta x then plus another linear function c3 plus c4 x into sin beta x then apart from that all the different values will have separate term c pi e power m pi x plus c6 e power m6 x dot 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 till the last value if the same thing like there are three alpha plus or minus i beta then instead of linear here quadratic will come so we learned the complete procedure for writing the complementary function so we will write the auxiliary equation we solve it we get the values of m depends upon the values of m there are different ways to write the complementary function so all the cases all the possible cases we have discussed till now whatever the values which we discussed about m1 m2 m3 dot 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 till mn we have also discussed about the imaginary roots so apart from that the other values what we discussed are real values as a next part now we will learn the procedure for finding the particular integral procedure to find particular integral we already discussed the general form of the differential equation since it is like a polynomial we can name the entire expression as f of d so our equation is in the form of f of d into y equal to some x we shall write that here f of d into y equal to some function x this function 
x can be exponential for example it may be in the form of e per ax or it can be trigonometric like sin ax or cos ax or it can also be some algebraic expression like x square plus x minus 3 so these are the possible form either it can be exponential or it can be sin or cos trigonometric function or it can be some algebraic function but not only this it can also be a combination of these three now let's discuss the each possible cases suppose in the first case if this x is e power ax the procedure is we have to write particular integral is nothing but the function e power ax whole divided by f of d and here substitute in place of d the value of the power to the exponent that is a and this will give us the particular integral suppose if f of d becomes 0 on this substitution then the procedure is particular integral will be x into e power ax divided by f dash of d we have to find the derivative of this and write it in the denominator and we have to multiply x in the numerator then we have to substitute d as a suppose once again if this becomes 0 if f dash of d becomes 0 then particular integral will be we have to multiply one more x so already there is x now become x square in e power ax as it is and we have to find the second derivative then we have to substitute d as x so we have to continue this procedure till we get the proper answer so this is how we find the particular integral when the function is exponential alone let's discuss the next possibility where the x can be either sin or cos sin ax or cos ax so to find the particular integral we write either sin ax or cos ax in the numerator then whole divided by f of d we have in this case we have to substitute d square as a square with a minus sign outside whatever the value of a here will be substituted but only for d square we substitute a square along with a minus sign outside suppose if the denominator becomes 0 then we have to multiply numerator by x and differentiate the denominator so in that case it will become x into either sin ax or cos ax will be there and denominator will become f dash of d now once again we have to substitute d square as a square with a minus sign outside suppose if we don't have d square for example suppose if i have x into sin 3x in the numerator and in the denominator we have a cubic d cube minus 
4d square plus 5d for example when i want to substitute d square as a square with a minus sign outside this term should be rearranged as x into sin 3x whole divided by d into d square then after this we can substitute wherever d square is there we have to put 3 square with a minus sign outside so that is possible here and here so whenever d square is there we will substitute directly if it is not there we have to bring d square by rearranging the terms this is one such thing suppose take another example suppose if you have x into sin 2x and denominator suppose 2d plus 3 now when i want to substitute d as the value of a from here but since it is a trigonometric we cannot substitute the value for d we have to substitute only for d square which is minus 2 square but we don't have d square here for that purpose we multiply with the conjugate so when you get a term like this the conjugate of the denominator is 2d minus 3 and 2d minus 3 we have to multiply with both numerator and denominator and numerator we will write as it is then coming to the denominator we have to use a plus b into a minus b form so 4d square minus 9 now it is possible to give substitution for d square as 2 square with a minus sign outside so whenever d square is not there we have to bring it by rearranging and in this case by multiplying by its conjugate suppose the denominator comes 0 for the second time again we will repeat the same process we multiply the numerator by x and differentiate the denominator so already first time when it becomes 0 we did the same process and second time suppose if f dash of d is also 0 if f dash of d which is present the denominator becomes 0 in the earlier case it was like f of d becomes 0 so once again we will multiply numerator by x and differentiate denominator so it is going to be x square now and in the numerator either we have sin ax or cos ax and we go for second derivative f double dash of d then once again wherever d square is there we have to substitute a square with a minus sign outside suppose after the second differentiation if the denominator term becomes 2d or only d it means 1 by d stands for integration so this term we have to integrate integration of sin 3x we have to write so these are the complete procedure we follow when we have trigonometric function sin ax or cos ax while finding the particular integral now let us see the third case where if you have f of d into y equal to some algebraic function in place of this x so the particular integral is going to be x bar n by f of d as usual for this f of d we have to take it to the numerator like f of d whole power minus 1 then we have x bar n and we have to write this f of d in a special form similar to the one below 1 plus x whole power minus 1 or 1 minus x whole power minus 1 or it may be 1 plus x whole power minus 2 or 1 
minus x whole power minus 2 something like this because once if this form is written we have a formula for its expansion it is going to be 1 minus x plus x square minus x cube plus dot 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 similarly here all the terms will be plus because there are two minus so 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube plus dot 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 and the next one expansion is since there is only one minus it will become alternatively there will be positive and negative so 1 minus 2x plus 3x square minus 4x cube plus dot 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 and in the last case there are two minus so it will be all terms positive 1 plus 2x plus 3x square plus 4x cube plus dot 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 after this expansion we multiply this x power n and here as a formula we wrote x but in the problem we will be having in terms of d so all these things will be in terms of d then we find its derivative we multiply this x power n then we find its derivative and accordingly we complete the particular integral fourth possible case where the right hand side function is a combination of exponential and trigonometric like this or it can be e power ax into cos bx in this case the procedure is particular integral we have to write the function either it is e power ax into sin bx or it can be e power ax into cos dx whole divided by f of d first step we have to replace d as d plus a a is nothing but whatever the number present here either here or here any one only will come since there are two cases we just put r now after replacing this we get e power ax into sin bx or e power ax into cos bx so it will become f of d plus a after that we have to replace wherever d is there b square with a minus sign outside whatever the number present here will be used as b suppose if denominator becomes 0 then we multiply numerator by x and differentiate the denominator and we proceed in the same way like the previous cases here the main thing we have to remember is when it is the combination as a product of exponent and trigonometry first thing is d is replaced as d plus a then every d square is replaced with b square with a minus sign outside next case where it is a combination of exponential and product with algebraic term so here a particular integral procedure is we write e power ax into that algebraic expression divided by f of d as per the procedure d is replaced as d plus a so we get e power ax into x power n by f of d plus a after that we follow the procedure which we discussed under algebraic term so this e power ax will write it separately then after this this term will come to the numerator as power minus 1 and we have the algebraic term x power n and we will write this in the form of 1 plus x power minus 1 actually in place of x we have d or in combination of some terms in terms of d or 1 minus x whole power minus 1 or 
it can also be sometime 1 plus x whole power minus 2 or 1 minus x whole power minus 2. So we write this in this form expand multiply with x power m and wherever d is there we differentiate according to the terms present and continue the finding the particular integral. Another case where we have the equation f of d into y equal to either sin or cos with algebraic expression or cos ax into some algebraic expression. So in this case the procedure to find the particular integral is we write in the numerator either this or the another term whatever present in the equation and in the denominator we have f of d. We will rewrite the numerator the sin ax or the cos ax in the form of either suppose if it is sin ax it is the imaginary part of e power i ax then into x power n. Suppose if it is cos then it is the real part of e power i ax into x power n. So we convert the trigonometry function in terms of exponential then after that the procedure is similar to the previous cases which we discussed. So after this we have to replace d as d plus i a. So it will become imaginary part of e power i a x into x power n or we get real part of e power i a x into x power n whole divided by f of d plus i a. Then we have to write this f of d plus i a in the form of whole power minus 1. Then we have x power n and before this we may have either real part or imaginary part sorry either we have imaginary part or real part of e power i a x. Then once again this will be written in the form of 1 plus x whole power minus 1 or 1 minus x whole power minus 1. We expand it accordingly multiply with x power n then finally we replace this e power i a x and in the starting either we have real part or imaginary part then this e power i a x will be replaced as cos a x plus i sin b x. Then we have rest of the terms. Then after simplifying everything we choose either real or imaginary part according to the question. Choose either real part or imaginary part according to the question. So these are the general procedures which we discussed and in the next videos we will be solving the problems based on all the possible cases. So once all those problems are done all these procedures will be very clear.